and we are building a Yokomo YZ2 DTM 3.1. It's only taken us half a year. That's... Hi guys, Brett here from Hearns Hobbies. I've got Simon Healy with me. How you going everyone? We, we are continuing the build on the Yokomo YZ2 DTM 3.1. So, so far we've put the the sliding chassis together, so to speak. Yep. We've got the arms, got the transmission, done the diff. It's all looking good and sweet. Now we're going to put the the bouncy bits on, the shocks. Well, we're up to that now because I just put all the parts on that you left out. So. Yeah, that's right. We, yeah, there might have been a few additions that have just yeah. come in. So, yeah. So much better buggy now than it was <laughs> ten minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to build the shocks. Simon's going to let us in on some some secrets on how to get them working nice and how to do them properly. So let's jump into it, mate. What are we doing? I've got the instructions here. You can unpack the stuff, mate. All right. Well, Maybe. you can look at the book then. You probably need to look oh, at that. But, but I, you, right. I can only, I can only but, see but, the pictures. I can't read the words. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all right. There's no no shame in, in but what's going on here? Being blind. What have we got? Got my nine steps nippers. All right, so what parts do we need? We need... You need, need a scalpel. I don't need any of these parts right now. No, you don't. I just right. thought I'd get you out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> that worked. <laughs> oh, look out. All right. We'll just, get, there? we'll just get the O-rings out. Get the O-rings out. All the rubbery bits. Yep. Now, they're not actually... The, the shock shaft O-ring is not actually an O-ring, is it? They're all O-rings, but they call them X-rings. Because they're moulded into... It's you actually got, got two yeah. two ceiling faces, doesn't it, on the shaft? Two narrow yeah. ones. And on the outside as well. On the outside as well, so it doesn't leak past the O-ring yeah. outside the body. It actually, it actually helps to seal better because rather than have a curved O-ring mm -hmm. that has one ceiling contact surface, yeah. this has two In the middle. because it goes... It's got two lips, yep. so it's got two contact surfaces, the X-ring does. So if you think of an X, like an X, yep. that's you. There you go, that's yep. why they call it an X-ring. Yep. <clears throat> Alrighty, so this is probably the worst part, is putting these O-rings inside the collars. Well, it helps if you pick up the right ones. It does. Because there's little ones there that go under the shock caps. Now Simon's gone ahead and just shoving all that, the sharp bits around. Just stick your finger in there, mate. You can feel it go in the groove. Do you want a bit of rubber grease on there? No. This one's done? No? Just run it dry? Where's this seal? Have you done it? No, because we've only got enough ah. to do two. We'll do two first. All right. All right. I'm out. There's so, one. so, this one's already, O-ring's already in this one, right? Yep. So when I put them, I don't, I don't actually agrees that because it's not a super tight fit on this on the body no well some are some are really grippy and tight okay okay and they're really hard to turn but the yokomo one is just snug it's quite it's firm but it's not over tight so you don't, to to, you don't need to you don't need to oil the o-ring up so when you put it on rather than just pushing on and trying to turn i turn it backwards until you hear the click yeah you listen I like to cross thread it and jam it on. Well, yeah. Well, so you put it on, you turn it backwards till you feel the threads click. Oh then, my god! And then you turn it forward, and you can't cross thread. That is a Healy hot tip right here. Okay, it just makes it a bit easier. And ensures that we don't gall up and damage the threads. So these are the front shock bodies that we're doing now. Yep, I just copied you. So front. Yep. These are beautifully machined and anodized. By the way, super impressed. Well, you are easily impressed. Wow. Good bouncy bits, mate. Good bouncy bits. I'm seeing you. All right, so we want the, the front ones will be two hole by 1.6, which are inscribed, marked actually on the piston. Yep, so we don't need to get the white marker out for that. Oh, that's alive. So that's 1.7. That's 1.7, and, and the shock pistons on the dirt version are 2.2 millimeters thick. Yes. On the carpet version, they're two millimeters thick. Okay. Okay. So they also vary the size of the hole. So the thick and of the, the thickness. So the thick of the piston. Okay. The 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 the, the sl well to to make it sound really simple, the thicker the piston, the slower the oil tr travels through the hole. Yeah. And it changes laminar and turbular. 
thinner the piston, the quicker. So what I found, generally, it's about 2.5 weight difference between the thicker piston to the thinner piston. Yeah. So if you're running a thick piston with, let's say, 35 weight, yeah. and you get a thin piston, you'll go 37 and a half. Yeah. Okay. okay. The kind of it's really close. But it will also change the the pack a bit, no? Or the it does. So the, the thinner piston, the thinner piston works quicker. Like yeah. In the ripply and the rougher stuff, and will have less pack. Um. It will have less pack, yes. Than the, than the thicker piston, and that's why the, the Astro car. Well, the, the Astro. Well, the Astro car. You, you notice all. You like if you watch the European carpet series mm. like the and the astro when the guys jump they don't jump way out past the jump they always time the jumps and land perfect right and they got a bit lot like me of, kind of <laughs> yes i don't know what to say now <laughs> i'm blowing his train of thought <coughs> he saw me lower his four-wheel drive four-wheel drive off the track and into yeah. the weeds yep so <laughs> so and and, and Generally, with the, the more pack, you don't need so much um, droop. Yep. Because the, you know the the pack works a little bit better. All right. All right. That that is a, a lesson in. Well, it's not a lesson. It's just well, something it's, you. It's nice to know these things. It's though. just something you you kind of learn because the only way you really do get to learn a list, like you can <laughs> you can walk up to anyone on the track and go, "What do you do?" and they'll tell you, and I guarantee someone that's inexperienced and doesn't have the knowledge, they'll forget that by the end of the day, all right? So rather than keep getting told something, it's good to be told and get an idea so you get the general yeah, aspect of, of, of which way you're going and the help, but you've got to try it, do it for yourself because that'll teach you quicker and it'll ref it'll it'll stay in your mind. And you'll get a feel for it too yeah. and then you might need to change back or, or make yeah. another change. So you can read as much as you want, you can, you can um, as long as they have big pictures, I'll read. Yeah, you'd be told as much as you know, but there's nothing like the actual own personal experience to, to um. Uh, BJ's left his hair in the bloody O-ring grease. Well, you shouldn't be using his hair gel. So we've got rubber, rubber O-ring grease. We'll just drop these things in there. Got our nine steps gizmos, because I don't like to put sharp tools near my near my O-rings or X-rings. I use a 1.5 mil driver. Yep. All right. Don't put too much on because you don't really want too much. You don't want to squirt it all into the well, you uh, don't want it, the chamber. You don't want it loading up into the actual shock. You just want enough on the O-ring to um, to aid in sealing and lubricating, and we're actually yeah. protecting the, the O-ring. Stop. The, the O-ring doesn't swell as quick. Well, coming into contact with the oil. Yeah. Can you open up the bushes, please? Yeah. Why not? You asked me so nicely. Yep. I'm just you know. Well, yeah, lock the O rings. <coughs> well, not yet. Now, once these shocks are built, the, the trick's going to be to actually go out there and use it before it um <laughs> before they all seize up and swell. <laughs> Leave it sitting on the shelf for six months. It's not going to do it any favors. That's exactly right. It'll be all over. So, so we've. <clears throat> What's that? I'm just uh. We yeah. got the O ring. The first one in there. Yep, yeah, first one. It's got a nice coating actually on the whole o-ring okay the first one's the important one because it has the silicon oil sitting on top of it yes okay so um it's the one that cops all the oil and it's the one that swells the most out of the two mm. just push the seal in i mean the bush in what have you got here just a bit bigger driver and i'll just push it down just till you feel it kind of spring a little bit where the o-ring seated yep. and then we'll get the next one like so you actually go as far as wiping it off well yeah. look at how perfectly coated that is well it's perfectly coated you'd be good in a donut shop mate oh i don't know about that i'd probably lick the cinnamon before i put it in the donuts <laughs> well, you're better than licking that o-ring <laughs> <laughs> so this is the second one in there and you can see it's it sits just a little bit lower than the surface of the aluminium. Yep. When that swells, it'll it'll come up to the top. Have you got a hat that guide there? Yep. A hat. a hat. I have got a hat. Hat goes like that with the step upwards because yep. it's got to locate on the retainer. You haven't put the O-ring on, mate. Well, here you go. Oh, okay. Just seeing if you're you're on board with that one. I'm not really on the ball, but I'm. I'm can you trying. check the O-ring on the other one, please? Yeah. 
I can do that for you mate, excuse me for reaching over. <coughs> This is all pretty standard. Really, there's nothing secret about this apart from just using the, the grease on the X-rings. Look at this. Yep. How are you doing it? <clears throat> and when you put that on, don't screw it down tight. No. Screw it down firm and back it off about a turn so it's loose. So basically you've seated it and turn it off and leave it loose. So yeah. when we put the shaft in, there's no preload on the. It's it's the O-rings aren't really tight and squashed, and, and the hole's not going to be tight on them. You know what I mean? So there we go. I'm loving loving that. Beautiful shocks. Put the two O-rings up on the top where the um, they seal. Oh, under the caps, of yep. course. And where are the caps? And I was just going to ask you a question. Sorry. Just like I mentioned before, how to fix the car from Brett leaving parts out. What's in the what's in the um, cinnamon bun hole? There's an O-ring. Yeah, well, you just put the cap on yours without <laughs> putting the O-ring in it. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a terrible mistake. So why is there still an O-ring in there? So I'm just working out which one's had the O-ring <laughs> left out of it. Yeah, probably your one. No. I, I pushed it down and tried to seat it. Don't tell me you've opened four. No, we haven't. Unless they've chucked an extra one in the packet. And we've too, been too busy gas bagging. Take it apart. <laughs> These are the joys. Did you not put the, low, the first one in? Yeah, this has got two in it. All right. I'll test you with this one. Yeah. Mate, that one hasn't even got the bush in because you don't. Could, could well be the case. Yeah. Could well you be the case. You just jumped the gun. Talk about hurdles. Mate, you were out for the relay, weren't you? You're incredible. I'll let you finish this then. How's it looking now? Oh, look, we've got, we got room for no ring. <laughs> we'll put the bush. I can't believe you did that. That would have been... Just as... Just give would it have said, why is it all leaking? I, I don't think I'm going to let you touch anything now. Oh, oh wow. What? Better? It's right now. Yeah. That's the front one. So that's going to have 1.6s. Yep, that's those two there. Oh, we'll get the cartridges done first. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, we're going to do the cartridges. Right. So. I'm just working over a little cloth here. Get the shop tower. I'm gonna, I promise I'll do a better job on this one. Will you? Well, I'll, I'll try. I can't promise I'll well, try. This time, will. this time, let's put the O-rings on the on put, the shock bodies. Put all the parts on. The, no, the O-rings in the bottom and the top before we go any further. So you need a you need those two. So you got one at the top and one at the bottom. Yep. Can do that. Let's roll that on nice. The top one too. <clears throat> Don't go quiet on me, mate. I'm not quiet. I'm just concentrating. You try yeah. not to leave O rings out. <laughs> yeah, I only got as far as crayon class today. I'll let you have one of these. Thank you. There yeah. you go. There's the rubbery bits. There's your adjuster O ring. Oh, yep. Yeah. We'll S put that in. Yep, yeah, smack that in there. It's looking good. Yep, just just smash it in there. Well, you want to make sure it's nice. You want to yeah, bind just, it up. Just treat it the way you drive your cars. Well, I drive your car like that. You did on the weekend. <laughs> wow. You let him drive me four wheel drive, and you just tried to snap it in half. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't stopping till I tried. Jeez. No, it was good. It was good. It was quite an adjustment from a, a four wheel stock car, <laughs> to say the least. Well, you went from the frog. I went from a, the frog, that's right. I actually had the frog hand to a modified four. four. It's been a while since. When was the VIX? That was like. That was, and Wodonga. That was the last time I drove the car. Well, Wodonga was. Um, February. February and the VIX. And we're now May. Yeah, so. Let me in the little honey pot there, mate. Jeez, I tell you and what. And you run this off. Like that? Yep. Just, oh, that is a great technique. Yep, and it just. So you don't get a big blob of um, grease in the actual shock oil. Hey, 
Hey, Beej. Hello. How are you, mate? Uh, BJ's stalking us again. I know. He's going to come and take our dinner. I'll take your dinner. You've got no dinner there. Hello. No, we, uh, we ate dinner. What have we got here, mate? An O-ring. Oh. What do you think it is? <laughs> I don't know. Hey, this is one from my eight scale. <laughs> oh my god! No. <laughs> you got enough grease there to lube a crown wheel and pinion. <laughs> well, I'm saving it. I'm See you, BJ. Bye bye. See you, mate. Enjoy. Yep. All right. You'll be pleased. There's no O-rings guides left behind. Wow. Nothing's crossed through the strip. We're doing well. Not yet. We're doing real well. This is where things might get a bit dicey. Okay, so... Well, you want the two 1.7s? Yeah, I'll have the rear ones. There's the rear ones. I've got the front ones. Do they have washers on each one? Yep. <coughs> no, the washers go on the top. On the top or the bottom? I don't know. You're telling the story. There's no washers for the actual pistons because the shaft is swollen. Ah. See, in the, see in the picture you think it's a washer because you're yeah. dyslexic yep okay but it's actually just the picture of the shaft there you go so you just put that on yep you're where's, not lock tighting it where's the screws oh that could be a what have you done with the screws mate it's probably in the, the no, hardware no, bag no no screws there no screws there don't was tell it, me was it in the screw bag or was it in the shock bag you've lost them as well no there's a good chance i haven't They'll be those little ones, 2.5, 2 mil, I think, by 4. 2 mil by 4. Yeah, here they are. I've just measured these ones. These are precisely right. Yeah. No precisely, lock, are they? No Loctite for you. No Loctite. Alright. No. What do you need Loctite for? Oh, that's right. So it doesn't fall apart on you. Well, you never know. I want to go over jumps and everything. Do you? I'll try. Here we go. That is just sensational. Look at it. What? Did you, put just, the, did you put the piston on the right way? I just can't believe. Is the writing facing up so you can read it? Yep. Yeah. They are beautifully machined even. They're not just like parts tree pistons, are they? No, 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 no. They're, they're actually, um, they're really good quality. They're Delrin, they're machine Delrin. Mm. Really nice. They've got a nice smooth finish, like they're not a they're not a sharp square edge. But they do wear. Yep. Pistons and shock bodies do wear. If the the shock bodies will deteriorate really fast if you yeah. don't change your oil. Your oil, yeah. Particularly like if you go to a track that's a little bit dusty, a little bit gritty. Because it does come up. It does it. come up, yep. Yeah. And if you leave the shocks dirty, then the, the oil will turn to an abrasive kind of yeah. muddy oil. And you'll know because you'll go to empty your shocks and they're like, and the oil will be grey. It'll be, yeah. It'll be. It'll and that's when you go, oh, I probably left that too mm. long. Because it really should be clear or the yeah. colour of the... That's what I really like about the shock oil. Yeah. It's got a little bit of a green tinge to it. We'll talk about that when it goes in. Anyway, so the one mil spacers... They're, they're internal limiters. They go uh, on, the, on the rear. Yep. Okay, we don't have any on the front, um, but we do put them on the rear, so here we get the shock. So, they so, go so this, is, this is loose. This is loose. Loosey goosey. Yep. Did and you tighten up them front ones? Because I didn't tighten them up because you don't got the shock. Don't worry about the front ones. Did you talk about the keeping your shock shaft safe with your soft jaw pliers in it? I just smashed it together, mate. You can talk about the soft jaw pliers. Well, it's something that a lot of people, like, we, we don't think about it because it's second nature to us, but it these is. are aluminium um, anodized plier. So I see a lot of guys have just general pliers. I've even seen guys use side cutters to hold the shock shaft. Yeah. You should, shouldn't do that. No, because you put a nick on it. The only mm. time that the side cut is okay is if you're only going up to the thread. No, and it's no not, not okay. <laughs> because then when you get a crash, if you yeah. actually happen to pierce or mark this material, you'll, yeah. it'll snap there. Or when you're rebuilding your shocks and dragging it through the piston and you've got a sharper edge yes, in the thread. Yes, correct. It will grab the O-ring, the new O-ring, and damage it. And tear it. So these are the best way forward. Um, yeah. They're a bit of a multi-tool. You buy them once and you have them for So if, if you 
don't know if you can see, but they'll, they'll be marked there. Three mil, 3.5 and four mil shock shafts. Yep. So you're, you're covered for eight scale. You're covered for like Yokomo, the early Bungo, version 3.3. Yep. Um, and then you've got like TLR, they're 3.5. Yep. Okay, um, and there's a couple of other mo- uh, a couple of other models that are 3.5. Yeah, you know, brands. I mean, not models, um, but you, can, you just one pair of these, and they'll last your lifetime. Yeah, yeah. Don't really. And know. this part here is the most important part on these plies. It's great for getting the ball the ball we'll, into we'll, your. We'll, 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 we'll show that. We'll, we'll keep, go there. Yeah, we'll go there. Well, I can see how excited you are. And what uh, about these bits here for really reefing in there? Like, well, that's only if you're rough. Like you. Oh, <laughs> here we go. So anyway, we've we've put we slid the shock shaft in just, and we've still got this part loose. Yep. And that's got no pressure on the no. X rings and the guide, so it all just slipped through really easy. We just wipe the excess grease, and the other reason is the grease goes on here and it actually makes the um, ball end turn yep. on. Yeah, go on nice. really nice. So, so now that's that's in. Just tighten that up so it's firm. Feel that. And you can feel it. Feel that. That's just. Perfecto. That's sensual, isn't it? That's like... If that's the word you'd like to use, yes. Yeah. Oh, you know what we should have done? We should have built... This is my car. I should have built it with gold shock shafts. That would have been sexy. Wow. We'll do another one. We'll get you, you in when my shocks need rebuilding. <laughs> you just want me to build the shocks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that coming a mile away. Well, that way I'll know that they've got the, both O-rings in. Okay, so the ball ends. With Yokomo, you get a tree with... Three what? different lengths, four different lengths. Well, no, three. I'm sure. Oh, it's three. Yeah. Yeah. Long, medium, and short. short. Okay. So. And different <laughs> models, like four wheel, two wheel, use different parts off the tree, don't they? Yeah. So the long one has got like a, a ring as an identifier. Yep. The medium one. Has nothing. Yes, it does. It's got a dot. It's got a dot. It's got a dot. It's a little dimple on it. Yeah. It's a thing of beauty. A beauty Actually, spot. I can't see with this light in your eyes. I feel like a rabbit. There it is. It's got a little, just a little pimple dot, and then the short one is just nothing. It's just raw. It's just smooth. Factory. Yep. So it says in here. Says in here. It'll, it'll circle them. These parts are, that are not used. These parts are not used. So you get two lots of tree because you're using the same. Long. The same ones off both. Now, okay. do you use that as a tuning option ever or not? I do. I'm on, do. I actually run different to this, but I run a different rear shock tower, so we're not going to run that on, on yours. No, I want the fast way. Okay, so... I want to go fast, mate. I'm sure I've you seen do. your car jump. It doesn't jump that great, I'll be honest. No, nah, no. Nah, it's, it's, it's a bit like a grasshopper with no legs. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we've got the ball end. We'll just screw that on. So you look at the shock pliers coming in handy. I'm loving it. Yep. Make sure it goes nice and straight. Yeah, it's going on perfect. So what's the what's the um, shock shaft length we need on, on the rear shock? What's on the it, rear what's shock. What's it say in the manual? And the, <coughs> and manual, mm-hmm. the rear length is twenty seven mil, mate. Okay, I've just screwed that on roughly. I reckon. I reckon that's about twenty eight. You Let's reckon it's about twenty eight? Let's see. Yeah, you're probably bang on right there, actually. So come in a little bit more. Oh, on the second one. You just have to wait, mate. I've only got one, Sarah. Oh, hang on, I'll get my side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this oh, guy. Oh, jeez. Hey, you're an animal. Backyard Billy's on the job. That's right. Best boing is in the business. Mm. Oh. Don't get that excited. I'm pretty excited. I reckon that's close to 27. Might even be a bit under. Or just a bit over. Yeah, it's a bit under, mate. It is? Yeah. Now for this for this job you really need some verniers. And they don't have to be the flashiest ones out. These Did, ones these ones aren't. This they will go to a um, thousandth of an inch. Digital. But a tenth is perfect. Yeah, yeah but digital ones they're flat, they're not right, and they always let you down at the wrong times. So That's because you buy like crap. A of a turn. It's because you buy crap. I've got a set of mid of Toyos, it's got the same battery in it for the last six years. You keep them in your pit bag? Yep. Mid of Toyos. Yeah, three hundred dollar verniers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you, you need you to buy, measure you things, you buy them once and you, the job's done. I I do agree. I do. You can agree buy with you six sets of fifty dollar verniers and still have crap. Yeah, that's 
And not only that, but you know you're measuring the right thing. But that's why the mechanical one, I don't mind them. I only measure to a tenth of, tenth of a mil is pretty much good enough for me. So you see, that's the quality in your driving a tenth. I'll be lucky that, mate. I'm just going between the white lines at this stage. <laughs> you know? I've got to white keep it on the brown stuff. The white line fever. White line fever. I just got to keep it on the brown stuff. All right, so you're happy with the length of those two? Uh, I'm not happy with this buggy bean in the way. Just bear with me a second. Put it at the front there. Well, so people can see it. All right. It is a thing of beauty. Yeah. Huh? Just, just Put a little corner there. I'm back. We're going to. don't fall off my chair. Let so me slide what's the, on what's here. What's the front, 22? The front is 22, my friend. That'll be about 22.5. You've got me all discombobulated now. That'll be about 22.5, I reckon. Come on. Chop, chop. Chop, chop. What is it? Or is it 23? Yeah. It's closer to the 23? 22.3. 22.3? Bull crap. How can you tell? You're you're as blind as a bat. <laughs> Jesus. Let's go a quarter of a you turn, can, you, can, you can tell point 0.3. Yeah, you read it. You read the top scale here. It's how it works. Read the one up here, which one lines up. That's how you read a vernier, mate. That's probably why I have the digital ones. Maybe so so it works in or out? In a quarter. This one's got to come in more. Did you wind out on this one? You did, didn't you? Just to play funny buggers. That one's good. What have we got here? Go in again. Go in again, please. Measure it on the opposite side. Turn it 180 degrees. Turn you 180 degrees. Now come in a little bit more, please. Quarter? Eighth? No, quarter. Quarter. A good, good healthy quarter. Yeah. Here we go. Look at this. It really is a two-man job. I don't know what to say. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Wow. We got there in the end, mate. Oh, it was a hard slog, <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> what did you do today? I'm in the shop. What have we got? Um, <clears throat> so, the bottom ball. Oh, look at that. Is that hard anodized alloy? Oh, my Lord. They're very nice. Oh. They're very slippery and smooth. Mm. If you look at the bottom eyelet, it's a little bit hard. You, you, if you've got good eyes, you'll notice that one side, the hole is bigger in diameter. Yep. You want to push it through that side. Yep. So just sit that on there like that. Yep. This is where the tool comes in handy. Put the t just put that, clip that on there. Don't punch it through. Click. It's in. And it doesn't go shooting across the floor. The, the good thing about this is you don't damage the plastic or mark it or maim it or, or disfigure it. Pops the ball in, doesn't do any damage. No. And then, if you want to pop wanna, it out, want to change the length of this, you know, go to a shorter or a longer. I mean, it's not longer. We've got the longest time. Go to a shorter or the or medium. You're rebuilding the cartridge. You can just use the pliers the opposite way, like yep. that. Locate it into the thing, and and once again, you've done zero damage to the bottom ball. All right, mate. Well, don't wear it out. I'm going to do this at least another twenty times. <laughs> There we go. That's going to be the best part of its life. Now that's run in. That's run in now. That's that's doesn't even have to go through a running process. That's that's ready. That's ready for the A main. Well, won't be me driving that, mate. So we've got our our front ones over here and our rear ones over here. Do you want me to go ahead and start getting some oil in there? Oh, you can you can. You had to bring an eight scale. Okay. God. We've got the rear ones over your side and we've got the front ones over here. Geez, you're rare. Why? What do you think they just grow on trees, mate? Yeah. Alright. Look at that. So what's 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 it say in the um <clears throat> uh, well we're not using the kit oil. Where yeah, is but, the kit but, oil? Does but it even read, come with kit oil? Read the instructions. Well, it's saying it gives you options for front 450, rear 400. Yeah, but read it. Can you read Japanese? Uh, no, fill to the rim with shock oil. Slowly <coughs> move up and down. To so what I've noticed, in, what I've noticed in the manual. Yep. So this one here, see, see how the Japanese run lighter oil. Yeah. So, but 
it's CST, it's not WT. We've yeah, got WT. That's right. So it's 450 front, 400 rear. And the CST mm. is really the metric way of doing it, isn't it? It is. Where this it is, is the, the old it's, school. WT varies between brands. CST is a standard yeah. measurement. And they're both of a viscosity of the oil, which is its resistance to, to move. Yeah. A measurement. So, so we'll go 32 and a half front. 32 and a half. You can do the rear ones while you're over there. Oh. You got 30 weight. Now this is the XTR oil. Yeah. Um, and this is super cool. Like I said, it's got a tint of green to it, but you know when to change it. Um, yeah, it comes in nice big meaty bottles, 200 mil bottles, which is good for off-road because you'll be surprised. All right, so you you fill up. Uh, well, you like you like a millimeter or two low. What's wrong with you? Can't you see well, the top? Well, it's going to bleed at first. You, but you're going to have air under the piston. It's going to drop. Right. right, so just go up slowly halfway. Halfway. Yep. And then pull down, and you'll get a big suction and air bubble come down. Now just pull the piston down. Looks like champagne. Did I do it right? Is it What'd it take to, so long is for? Is it meant to be like champagne? You got all bubbles in it. You should have just went. <laughs> <coughs> I tell you, this is an education with you. <laughs> this is how it's done. No, pull it the shaft like, down. Looks like the video. Looks pull like the, the shaft all the way down. Now leave it. Just l stop <laughs> playing with it. <laughs> Put it in there and leave it. All right. God, you got the crap everywhere, haven't you? I haven't spilled a drop and you've got it everywhere already. I filled it to the top. You went past the top. I watched you. <laughs> All right. So, I've done it once. Look at that. No air bubbles. Good. I'll do it again and you watch this time. <laughs> no right. air bubbles, no trouble. Okay. So the piston's, the piston's at all the way at the bottom. You're going to have a cavity of air underneath it, which yeah. will, once you put the oil in, it'll hold. So just put the oil in. Yep. Oil going in. So just level with the top. Push up. One, two, three big bubbles. Four. And it's nearly done. Where you went slow and created lots of bubbles. Like like you were after like the champagne effect. Yeah. Champagne shower, buddy. And now I can do that and there's no more there's no more squeaky bubbles in there. No squeaky bubbles? No squeaky bubbles. And if there is, they'll, they'll take a couple of minutes maybe to come up. Do you use a shock pump or anything like no, that? No, They're emulsion shocks. You're wasting your time trying to get air out of them. Because as soon as you go use them for the first time, they're full of air again. Yeah. <clears throat> so. But it is important to keep them fresh. If you're dead... And there's no if, point to like rebuild them the night before if you're racing in the middle of summer. No, because the temperature, the track. The, the, they'll build temperature once the heat comes up. So you're better off, if you build them the night before, you're better off to pack them with no springs on them, compressed. Yeah. And usually bleed them throughout the day anyway, no? Because I usually yeah. pack up if the weather's... Yeah. If you could be bothered. I don't. Well, that's the difference, mate. That is the difference. You know? But then again, when, when I've got two kids racing and I'm running a club and doing everything else, I don't have time to build shocks. Well, I'll tell you what, mate. I'll give you a hand. Yeah, no worries. No worries. I can see what that's going to end up like. <laughs> what have we got here? What's going on now? That's a little screw. Yep, so we've got, we got the cap. Cap. All right. Rather than just ream it in dry, mm. put a bit of oil on the screw. And screw it in, and it won't it won't be so harsh on the thread. You'd hear out. so if it starts to get really sticky, listen like mm -hmm. that. Come back out, okay? You don't want to balk it. No, you just don't want to keep going and, and have it pick up the plastic and, and tear oh, it. Oh yeah. So just in and out a couple of times. These are so tight, these screws. Yeah, well they've got a seal, airtight. No, no, they're tight on my tool. Oh yeah, some of them, yeah. This one. Look at that. They are tight, aren't they? Yep. There we go. Look you at can, that. You can actually use a little bit of grease too. Like It doesn't matter. Just something to lube the thread a little bit. Just to protect it. Do you lube the side of the body a little bit to aid the O-ring? No. 
You just <coughs> ram it on. Just enough. smash it in there. Don't you take the um, seal out again? The screw. The screw? Yeah. Alright. You can do that. Oh, okay. I was just checking. Put a little bit of grease on it. The grease will actually work better than the shock oil. No, I was just trying to get my the, the, the tip of my tool in actually. They're really tight screws. And it's this nine steps is really low tolerance. It's really tight. Not the one that you're using. It's a bit... How's your father? This is really tight, this one. It's got nothing to do with your father. Radio. <laughs> I was just putting some of your hair gel on there. Yep, that's my moustache wax. Yeah. <laughs> yeah my do you want me to start... Um, Putting these caps on? Is, that is, there any, is there any air in the shock still? Is it still coming up? I want to say no. Uh, have you have you made sure that they've got the right amount of oil? Because when these are brand new and they're dry inside, right, you'll need a mushroom of oil on the shock top. Do you understand? I've been known to put a few drops inside the, the cap before. You watch. That's not something that you do? No, I just get it right on the shelf. Like that. Filled to the brim. Oh, yeah? Yep. Watch me overfill it. Can I overfill it? Well, you're cleaning the crap up if you do. <laughs> shock oil is like that. It's, after this, I'm glad that the shocks are last on the build because... So once again, turn it backwards. Yep. Click. click. And then... Then because send you it can, home. Yep. Because you can actually... Um, Really easily. It's such a fine thread, isn't it? Yep. <clears throat> tighten it up. You got yours tightened Do up? You yet? tighten them all the way now? Yeah, clamp it down. You got no screw in there, have you? No, mate. No screw here. So is it tightened down properly? Yep. Alright, so I just get the rag and I put I just put the rag around the around the little swizzle hole. Just below the you know, just below the hot the bleeder hole. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm And can you grab pass up the, the Spring retainers. What spring retainers? Are one we for you, in there, mate. One for you. There's different spring retainers. You know what's no, the right one? Yep. Just put it on the bottom of the shock. You bleed it with the spring retainer. Yeah, because the spring retainer sets the height when it's compressed. Yep. Okay. Makes perfect sense. So you just um, hold it like that. Yep. Just push it up slowly, not super fast, because you'll see you still get a few little. Um, bubbles and then it'll go like no bubbles. Wipe it off. Whack the screw in. Yep. Like so. And just put the screw in until you feel it just go tight. Don't keep turning it like you would normally do. So <clears> strip <throat> it and then come out a little bit. Yeah. You're not working on your on your eight scale now. So yeah, they've actually got alloy caps. You'll just snap off the screw without a shadow of a doubt. There you go. Do you want to have a shock building contest? Yeah. I want to lick it. You can lick it all you like. <laughs> it's not going to taste real nice. Why? What are you trying to say? Well, it's got silicon oil on it. Don't mind a bit of silicon lube, mate. Come on. Here we go. Look. How's it feel? Push it up and down. I felt better. Really? <laughs> I'm good. It's pretty good, yeah. hey? Yeah. It's like silky. It's like buttery. It's very smooth. It'll actually feel like the oil's too soft. Like the oil's too... It does. Too light. It honestly does. It feels like it's... It feels like the oil in, my, in the front of the frog. That hasn't got any. No, no, that's what I mean. No. <laughs> so we'll just do the second one, just bleed the oil, push it up slowly, watch the oil come out. So when you cross thread this cap, yeah. can you, um, what do you do there? Do you just put a bigger self taffer in it or what? So what you can do, because these are two mil right screws, mm -hmm. if you happen to strip the thread in your top cap, and you're at the track and you're desperate, you put a 2.5 mil screw in and it'll work perfect. Will it? Yep. Absolutely perfect. It'll seal off and you'll be like, well, wow, it's like brand new again. So do you need a 2.5 mil screw now? Uh, no. 
I was just asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've heard that statement somewhere else before. Have it? <laughs> Just asking for a friend. Asking for a friend, mate. Mm. There's nothing wrong here whatsoever. Oh. Look away. Don't look at me. I, I reckon that. I reckon that's been put to Matt Jenkins a couple of times. Has it? <laughs> Just asking for a friend. <laughs> here we go. You done? Oh, we're, mate. Just, we're just this waiting. Is, this is art. You can't rush fine art. You know, as much. <coughs> to go fast on the track, sometimes you need to take an extra how, minute. How do pits. you get grease all over the white table when I've got nothing? Like, look, look, and you've got blue crap everywhere. Well, I like it. I say. Sometimes it's hard to get good help. Yeah, I've given up. Mhm. Mm I never started. Oh, look at you. Look at the table. God, you're an animal. <laughs> it's off camera. It's okay. It's on my elbow. It's, it's on my nose. Uh, yeah, I love building shocks. My yeah. pig. Can I have your uh, one and a half? My one and a half meal's a bit tired. I just don't like forcing it in. It's there you go. Screw. Would, you, would you like my bit of chucks? It's oh, look at in, that. It's not covered in... Um... Sputum. You done? You're organised? Getting there. Oh, You've got to you talk know. to it. You've got yeah. to talk to it and feel it. The shock whisperer. You've got to visualise. This, how You've about, got to visualise. How about you get rid of that chucks before you put <laughs> blue stuff everywhere <laughs> again? <laughs> You've got to visualise <laughs> how the, the oil's flowing and it's um, like a, it's like a colour. Oh, right. Okay. You know, I'd call it teal. Teal. <laughs> teal. <laughs> wow. <laughs> teal. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Okay. Haven't you ever heard of rose coloured glasses, mate? When I squeeze the shock, I can just, I'm just like, it's like an aura mm -hmm. of beautiness. So, uh, next, as we were discussing before, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. marking the collars. Yes. I just screw it right at the top. And you can either, like you suggested, file a little groove in there. I actually put a mark on with a white paint, mark, paint marker that I've taken home so you can't keep. <laughs> I'll do that at a later date. Yeah, I'll file. I actually file two of the flats off, like not off, but the anodizing off, so I can go like half turn and full oh, turn at a time. Yeah, two right. flat, so, so so flats. So you won't know where you're at at all. Well, I'll measure it up initially, well, no, and then so, I'll do so, the tweak. So, so we'll so run this, through this when the car's together. Yeah, but listen to this, right? If you've got two marks, okay, mm. and you turn it, and you don't keep a tab on how many times you turn it. How do you know how many turns you've done? Of course you do. You go, I'll turn it two, two silvers, so I'll do it a turn. So you if you've got one mark and you want to go half a turn, you just put the mark on the opposite side. And you don't I, have to... I hear you, mate, but sometimes you want to go a quarter and then you don't oh. know what it's, you know? I don't think you know what you're doing. And then when it's a quarter, then you've got one facing left, one facing right, and the car looks all cross-eyed. Fair enough. There's your springs, by the way. Oh, I like their springs. Oh, green. There's your retainers. There's the retainers. Did you get that out of the book, mate? Because there's a few on the parts, Trey. No, the other these the low ones are for carpet. So you've got four dots on the rear. Hey. Four dots on the rear. They got four dots, dots on them. Yeah. That's the low ones. Do you like to put the uh, the paint at the top or the bottom on your shocks? I like my paint at the top. I do. Yep. Would you like it at the bottom? I don't mind. You don't mind? I don't mind. Oh, they're green front and rear. Yeah. Oh, this is this is great news. Big fan of green. Green suits you, doesn't it? It does. Green's going to be... Uh, Feel like running on empty. Green is fast. Is it? Green is fast. Got have have you seen that? Chocolate. Running on empty? A long, long time ago. It's pretty old, mate. What are you saying? I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying it's an old music. music. How'd you go? Yeah, I'm good now. Do you need a hand? No, 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 no. Oh, all right. I'm just, you know, like... Oh, what colour are these? Oh, these ones feel a bit angry. You've got a lot of body temp going on there, mate. Oh! Yep, oh. They've, they've got, got too much feel pressure it. already. Feel it. All right, see these parts? Oh. They're just, like, spares. Are they? I'll check I'll, them up. I'll need them. I'll check them up your end. I'll need them. It's going to come back to the... Let's just slide that that way just a little bit. 
The marshal is going to be bringing that back all into the Marshal! What, what's this for? Nuts. Yeah. Okay, you got the other parts? You got the other, the Christmas tree parts for the shock? What have you done with them? You better get the box, mate. Oh, no, there it is. You've, See that? you've yep. been just throwing them around willy nilly. Yeah, just. You nearly willy -nilly nearly just ended up on the floor. Now just spin them. Just spin. Oh, jeez. See, they just come off easy. That is good plastic. It really is good fiber reinforced plastic, isn't yeah. it? So just slide them so on. Much glass. These are the bushes. These are the plastic bushes. There is an optional aluminium one. And on my car, I run optional aluminiums on the front. Do you know why? Because you because you know dive into the jumps all the time. When you crash, which you will do, you can bend the screw. But when you put the optional threaded aluminium ones on, it helps to reinforce the screw and stops them bending and breaking. The reason I don't like the alloy ones is because I actually like to adjust the pretension on the bush. Why? Please you explain. Because you get a bit of feel. I know you like yours all loose and rattly. Feel? What, what feel? You can feel it like it, that it's tight, the shock on there, but it's smooth. But then when it gets crap in there, it binds up. It doesn't get crap in there, mate. Only if you nose dive <laughs> upside down into the triple. Uh, you're hard work. Are you just... We put, hang on, we're on another page. You've just gone rogue on the instructions here, mate. Yeah, well... I don't know what I'm after, I'm after you. You're trying well, to... we're building the shocks. You're trying to insinuate that I've actually assembled one of these before. You're far from the truth. My God. Can't take you anywhere. Just give me the rear ones. All right. Just take the rear. I'm going to get this out of the way. We don't, the shock stand is done. There's really not much more to look at, to be honest. Well, I there mean, is. I mean, the car's basically built. It's just we've got four nuts and four screws, and we're kind of cooked. Are we going to get them on? Yeah. How long have we been going for? I think we should get the shops on. I'd really like to yeah. see it with the boing a bit. So we've got, we got the nuts. The nuts were just here. What you do with them? Is there no washers on those? You can no, have two. No, no. You're only doing two, mate. Oh, yeah. Um, we've got a 5.5mm yeah. driver, mate. Have we got this? The nine step kit does come with that, of course. It does. Look at that, nice and shiny and gold. It's got a really nice nail on it, that. See, look at you. <clears throat> With the alloy ones, you can't yeah, you do just that them, so much. You just screw them right up and they're done, they're cooked. <laughs> All right. Mate, you got to get on the program. Oh, I do, obviously I do. You are far better than I, and that's, but I'm catching you. I ain't even talking crap. Ask Jenko. Jenko. Your, your days are numbered, mate. My days were numbered a long time ago. Old boys club. What are you saying? What am I saying? I don't know. I think you better be careful. What? I'm, I'm putting down the gauntlet. I'm putting down a challenge. What size screws do we want? BH. Metric 18s? Well, of course it's metric. It's not going to be an Imperial 18, is it? Well, it could be. No, it's not, mate. Depends on what it's country you come metric. from. It's all going to be a metric 18. Turn it upside down. Now these have got arm spaces in there, is that right? Now no, these are the they're not drive. spaces, they're, not. they're, they're sh lower shock mount position. Yep. So you've got a little square block that yep. goes in the A-arm and you've got two holes. So you can have it so the two holes are in Yep. or you flip it and do it the other way and the two holes are out. You'll see there's a line Yep. There's one on line each side. On that. Yep. So you've actually, when you look at you'll understand when you look at the manual, you've got four positions on the lower arm for the shock. With two screw holes. So we're going to go with kit, which should be the second hole from the inner, I believe. Uh, it's showing the inner one. Is it? Well, innermost. actually, on the previous kit, it was the second hole. Yeah, but this is a fast one. Oh, right. This is because you've got it. Yeah, this is This means the prototype. line, the inner line's all the way in. All the way in, mate. So I just push them in like that. Oh, from underneath. Yep, I work from oh, underneath. You can, you can see the line underneath as yep. well. That's clever of them. And I'll just put the driver in there and just line it up. Wiggle it around? Yeah, wiggle it around. Like, you know? Nothing. You don't want to put it in sideways. No. It'll cock everything up. How you going, mate? I'm fine. Do you need a two-mil driver? No, I do. That one. That's not it. All right. There it is. It's looking... Oh. It's looking good. Fingers of Fury working away there. So we've actually got four positions to come out. 
Yep. Which is great. I'm a big, big fan of changing my lower shock positions. Why is that? To get a feel, adjust the way that the piston moves in the shock. Well, it isn't, it's not the it's piston just, speed. Just, just yeah, your piston speed. That's what changes. Yeah. Also changes your S, your swing lever ratio. Yes. The lever ratio on the actual shock and versus you know the position on the arm, which you know when you lean the shock over dramatically, that makes it more progressive. Mm. When you stand your shock up, it makes it linear. So standing your shock up will give you more drive and grip coming out of a corner. Lay, laying the shock over will give you more. Um, mid corner the grip and, and and traction that can also make the car do so there's can make the tra- car lazy and yeah. can make it a little bit but so generally if you lay it over you go up a spring rate generally yeah um, but it doesn't always correlate to that being the, the, the right setup you want to drive it like that just leave the front fully floating i won't need it mate i mean the, the, the front wheels will be in there that much so with these you've got a big flat flange on big flat flange on the bottom collar, yes. you've got a flange on one side. I'll put your flange to the back. Yes. Okay. And do you have your bleeder screw facing out or in? Out. Out. Yep. So you can do it during the day. Yeah. That you don't do. That's exactly right. How many holes have we got on the front to choose from? Should be, well, it'll be the outer hole in the that kit. That is definitely the outer hole. Um, I actually like the mill hole. Really? Yep. But I run a different spring. And so. a different piston, probably? No. No? No. I run the same piston, Mm -hmm. but I run a a higher oil and and a slightly higher rate spring. And I just find it a little bit more supple and the steering feels a bit nicer. That's me though. A lot of other guys like it on the outer hole because it gives you that more flatter, stable feel and and doesn't have that... You've driven my car and you reckon it's really sensitive in the steering. And collapses in the front end, basically. That's what you think. Basically, it's collapsing and and giving up. Says who? (laughs) That's because you're off the power too long. That's right. That's exactly why. Where's the two nuts? What have you done with them? The two black nuts? Yeah, mate. No need to, no need to go on about it. They're right here. Just well, you, 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 you like you've no... taken them away and you've hidden them. Well, now you've put blue grease in the manual. <laughs> oh, That's on my elbow. It's in my ear. I don't know how you can get that <laughs> crap and make it go so far. It'll be here tomorrow. I'll be on my sandwich tomorrow. Don't worry. Uh. Next we'll see in Channel 7, blue-green algae in Melbourne. In the water supply. Mm. Now, this is really handy because I've done away with my little screw chart, but they do have the screw sizes in. Well, in the manual, the it's manual. one to one. That's right. Makes it really easy. Yep. That's what I'm just doing, just identifying the For parts For people like the yourself, manual. it does. Well, because come to the end of the build, we've had it in and out of the packet so many times. Okay, so you, it's your car. You're, you're going outer or middle? Outer. We'll start with outer. Okay, he's, he's going. He's going hardcore. I just want to drive it the way Yokomo intended first. Or we'll mm. cra- crash it the way that they they didn't intend it. Yeah, to be that's crashed. fine. That's okay. I, you know, it's probably really to be honest. It's it's probably the best way to and start. And then you can make little changes and because. Every single individual, all us, we all have things we do and don't like, and, and some of us have habits in our driving that are different to other people's habits, etc., etc. So that's why I say of, I've got the habit of going fast. So, so yeah, yeah, that's why I say setup sheets don't always give you the setup you need. No way! Wow, that is looking like a proper buggy. I'm just fixing the springs up because you had no idea what's going on. Do you want the vernius? Not yet. No. That's your job. All right. I that's, usually that's start with them all squared up at yeah. setup time, and then I'll do the tweak from there. Hmm. So, oh, look at look at the toe out you've got going on here, man. It's because you wound it into the thread stop. Don't blame me. No, that's what we I said. had nothing to do we'll with it. We'll wind it in until there's no thread showing. I had nothing to said. do with it. Get rid of that crap. Hey, can you do something with your hair gel? I need that tomorrow morning. Put yeah. it on the stash before I come to work. All right. So, so we're, we're, we're at the point where we need to smash some electronics in this. And we're not going to do that on, on camera. Nobody wants to see us soldering up and, and that sort of stuff. Well, I don't want to be you. You can do that. <laughs> so I'll screw the... I'll get the electrics in it. Yep. What are you going to run? And then uh, it's going to be mod. Yep. It's going to be a OE1 speed controller. Okay. So, so what, what are you going to go? Like a 17.5 with some boost? 
Yeah, yeah, I might even go start with a 13.5. I've got this good old 13.5 that's come out of a bent four-wheel drive that I... <laughs> <laughs> no, didn't I put all fresh gear in this one? Eight and a half. Seven. You, you are hardcore. Well, I'd like to be overpowered and then I'll, I'll, I'll back it back. You okay, know? you said it. Overpower, <laughs> then back it back. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, the backing back part is when you smash it into something. <laughs> no. No, um, no. I, I'm, I, I, I'm better at driving and overpowered. Once I come to terms with it, then cool. trying to find the power. Well, you drove but, mine. Mine's got seven and a half, and you drove mine quite well, to be honest. Oh, that's the nicest thing you've ever said, Simon. No, you did. You did. You didn't break it. <laughs> I definitely did not break it. You might need a new wing, but I didn't break it. Yeah, no, it's all good. Um, so, yeah, next episode we'll come back. The electronics will be in. We'll get it fired up. We'll run yeah. in the slipper. So, you know... Run in no, the diff. No, no, no. We'll, we'll, we'll run the diff in. Yep. Then we'll set the diff, yep. like as in the right, and then once that's done, then we'll adjust the slipper to the right position. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then we'll put it on a setup station or we'll, we'll set it up. Yep. Do set the, the set the ride heights with the battery and all that kind of stuff in yep. it. Then we'll do the we'll do the toes and the endpoints mm -hmm. on the transmitter, dial in the yep. transmitter. Yep. To make sure that we're um got a good um point if we want to turn down drill rate that I know it's gonna be equal left and right, turning it down. And then we'll go ahead and set the cambers up and the, the droops. Droops, I suppose, not so much that you do on these cars, is it? Do you, do you droop, play? Well, it's, it's off-road. Um, your droop does have a lot to do with it, but it's not like on-road. It's not, not, it's not the same as when you're, you're doing on-road. On-road droop's really, really important. Mm. Like, it's, it's, it's crucially important mm. drooping on-road. Off-road, um, you still want the car to land and absorb all the bumps and the holes and the jumps and stuff yeah. like that and so whereas yeah. on road we use it more for balance yeah you know so. it's really changing the, you, the load the transfer wing on? um i probably will just to break it partially use it as a bumper bar at the start <laughs> to, to you know just to keep right, this a so, bit shinier yeah. and, and nicer so, so next episode we'll, we'll run the diff in yep. we'll set the slipper we will program the electronics for mod yeah, okay. yeah, we'll, we'll run through we'll, some of the yeah, parameters we'll on do, the program yeah, card. We'll do that, um, just just to give you a rundown of kind of where to start. Yep. And um, we'll give it the drop test on the bench and set the ride height and stuff like that. Yep. And, um, yeah. And I'm hoping that my shiny new radio comes, actually. This is going to have a new radio in it. Wow. That's right, mate. And then what are we doing after that? Another build. Oh. Well, I'm not going to reveal it yet. We're not revealing anything yet. Okay, so what are we doing? A hornet? Maybe. We could do. I don't know. Hope wild, you guys wild, are enjoying wild the... Wild willies. I hope you guys are... Yeah, I don't know how we build that, but it'd be fun watching anyway. Oh, that's the car I wanted when I was a kid I never got. Really? Yep. Oh, I'll buy you one for Christmas. Thanks, mate. You, everyone heard that? Yeah. Oh, I'm getting <laughs> wild willies for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I'm Brett. It's Simon Healy. Yep. And, uh, yeah, we're Hearns Hobbies, and we are building a Yokomo YZ2 DTM 3.1. It's only taken us half a year. That's right. Um, thanks for watching, and, yeah, I hope you join us on the next episode when we get the electrics in and start to get it set up and dialed in. And then when it's all done, done and ready come out to Keelor and I'll let you drive Brett's car <laughs> why not yeah <laughs> I might even let you drive it <laughs> you can help you can do the trims for me yeah no worries fantastic guys see you guys thanks for watching bye